Hey, how long do you expect me to provide for you? From now on, I'm going to live off your savings. Saying this, my husband Brian confirmed that he did take early retirement without telling me anything about it beforehand. Well, I've reached my limit. I won't let this person waste my savings away. Let's get a divorce. I'm going to say this because no one else was going to say this, but... As soon as I said everything, my husband turned pale. Y you You're joking, right? My name is Emily. I am a 60-year-old housewife. My husband, Brian, and I have been married for 40 years. I started working at a bank after graduating from high school. It was there that I met my husband. My husband is two years older than me. And when he graduated from college, he got a job at the bank where I worked at. And we were in the same department, so we grew closer and began to go on dates. Then, three months after we started going out, he proposed to me and we got married. Upon marrying Brian, I became a full-time housewife. I became a housewife because my husband asked me to stay at home and take care of the house chores. I thought I wanted to work a little more. But even so, I have no regrets about becoming a full-time housewife. As a housewife, I have spent my life thinking about how to save money and be frugal. Because of that, I was able to learn a lot of skills while putting it into practice. And I learned a lot of other things as well. And there is one more thing that made me feel happy that I stayed at home and being a full-time housewife. That is because I was able to spend a lot of time with my daughter, Maya. Ever since I gave birth to my daughter, we have spent time together as a family. I think it is especially significant that I got to be there for Maya during her childhood years. I was able to see her change and grow up bit by bit. My daughter has grown up very quickly and has become a very good girl. If she needed advice on anything, she would always turn to me and she would often tell me about things that happened at school. She would tell me about the people she liked and she would also tell me about the boy she was dating in high school. I think the fact that I was able to gain my daughter's trust in such a way was also a crucial part for the family. But after 40 years of marriage, it's not always all the good things that happen in our family too. One of the bad things is my relationship with my husband. My husband had always been a bit of an overbearing husband, but it got worse when my daughter went off to college and started living on her own. Hey, make coffee for me. Make sure it's drip coffee, not instant coffee. Oh, I'm sorry. We're out of coffee filters right now. What? Well, go buy some right now. Huh? And while you're at it, go buy some pastries too. Not the cheap ones from the supermarket, but the ones from the pastry store. I'm the man of this house, so you better treat me with some sincerity. My husband would always say such things to me like this and pushed his selfishness through. When our daughter lived with us, she defended me by saying things like, Dad, you're being too unreasonable. You should take better care of mom. So my husband wasn't being that harsh with me when my daughter was living with us. However, after my daughter started living on her own, I guess he began to lose self-control. He treated me as if I were his maid. As a housewife, I was home all the time. And when my husband came home from work or spent all day with me on weekends, I became more and more stressed. After more than 20 years of marriage, I could not take it anymore and thought about getting a divorce from Brian. So one time, I made up my mind to request Brian for a divorce. But I couldn't go through with it after all. How will you, a housewife, make a living from now on? And how are you going to pay for Maya's college tuition? She's an adult now, so there's no need for me to pay for her, and I'm not obligated to pay for her tuition either, right? What? If you're willing to pay for our daughter's tuition while also taking responsibility for your own life, then fine, we can get a divorce. I was surprised to hear my husband say such a thing. I instantly felt uneasy. I could never do that, and I couldn't let my daughter drop out of college. So, I decided to give up on the divorce then. 
Mom, I'm sorry. I put you through so much. It's all because of me. Oh, it's okay. Maya, honey, you didn't do anything wrong. It's my fault for not being prepared for a situation like this. So that's why I've decided that I'll work. Of course, I have to take care of the house chores, so I decided that I'll work part-time. Work the hours like a full-time employee as much as possible. I see. But don't push yourself too hard, okay? Yeah, thank you, honey. And I started working at a bank teller's office. I get to work five days per week from 9 a.m. to 16 p.m. I can balance my work with my house chores without any major issues. My husband was against it, but I did my best to make myself go through with it. Going out into the world and working again has been quite positive for me. First of all, I can now afford to be financially comfortable, and I have more opportunities to communicate with people other than my husband, which has helped me mentally calm down. I was earning roughly $2,200 a month, but I decided to put $200 into the family budget to cover only for food expenses, use about $200 as my own allowance, and save the remaining $800. My husband made fun of me for not using much makeup on and not buying new clothes and I didn't care and focused on saving money. Someday, I would leave my husband and become independent. When I made up my mind to do so, I was able to focus to do my best. And my daughter came home regularly and took care of me. Thanks to that, I was able to live a much easier life mentally than in the past. Then, my daughter graduated from college and got a job. She started working hard as a company employee. When I see my daughter in a suit, I'm deeply moved by the fact that she has become an adult. My daughter became a respectable member of the society, and a few years after she became a company employee, she was promoted in her department. Seeing her devote herself to her work inspired me as well. During that time, my husband remained the same, making fun of me my personality and spending money carelessly on things even more compared to before. And to make matters worse, he started drinking a lot. Hey, there's no beer here. You are drinking too much. It's not good for your health. Shut up. You shouldn't care what I buy with my money. Just shut up and go buy some beer. My husband's drinking increased over the years. Honestly, he drank so much. We had never spent that much on food before, but since my husband's drinking increased tremendously, our food costs became much higher. I tried to get creative at cooking as much as I could, but it was still very difficult because it put a lot of pressure on the family budget. Even so, I would not reduce the amount of my savings. I made up my mind to do so and worked hard to save money. And so I worked hard year after year. I realized that it had been almost 18 years since I started working part-time. That meant that I had been married to my husband for almost 40 years. Then, my husband suddenly said something outrageous. I quit my job. What? What do you mean? I mean, I took early retirement. Why? Why would you do that? My husband is only 62 years old. He has three years left before he can retire from his company. I can't stand the thought of my husband being home all the time so soon. When I asked him that question, to my surprise, he became grumpy. What? You don't like it? I didn't say that. I can see it on your face, you know. My husband got annoyed and started to lash out at me. Hey, how long do you expect me to provide for you? Huh? You've been living on my earnings until now. So now, it's my turn, right? I know you've saved a good amount of money from your part-time job. From now on, I'm going to live off your savings. Saying this, my husband Brian confirmed that he did take early retirement without telling me anything about it beforehand. Well, I've reached my limit. 
I won't let this person waste my savings away. Let's get a divorce. Huh? Divorce? I can't keep on doing this with you anymore. You're pretending to be a tragic heroine again, saying you can't stand this kind of life. You asked for a divorce quite a while ago, didn't you? But at that time you gave up, because you wouldn't know how to live on your own after we got a divorce. And that hasn't changed, has it? If we divorce now, you won't have any money for your retirement. Then, it would be safer for you to live with me and do all the housework, wouldn't it? You will be my slave for the rest of your life. He is such a jerk. My husband is going to use me around until I die. I'm going to get away from this man for sure. I took a deep breath and made up my mind. Then I took out the divorce papers from the drawer and confronted my husband. My feelings have not changed. Let's get a divorce. My husband was surprised how firm I was, and he flinched a little. Are you s serious? If you divorce me, you will be much poorer than you are now, you know? That won't happen. Huh? I'm going to tell you because no one else will. But I have tens and thousands of dollars in assets from stock investments. As soon as I said that, my husband turned pale. You, you, you're joking, right? You're investing in stocks? I'm not lying. I showed him the balance in my bank book. No, no way. You really do have tens and thousands of dollars. My husband was at a loss of words that I had far more assets than he did. So now you know, I have no trouble leaving you. You, on the other hand, would be in trouble because you wouldn't have an anyone to do the housework without me. <sighs> well, th then I'm not divorcing you. You're going to stay married to me for the rest of your life. I knew that's what Brian would say. But I had taken measures for when this was going to happen. I'm sorry, but I'm definitely going to divorce you, so you'll have to give up. I have recorded and kept a diary of every horrible things you've ever done, and every rude, terrible things that you've said to me. I have given them all to my lawyer. My lawyer said I can get a divorce on the grounds of harassment, and I can claim for compensation. Huh? Compensation? Now wait a minute, you've got to be kidding me. I ain't paying no compensation. You have no right to veto it. No matter how much you scream or shout and make a fuss, divorce and compensation are absolute. Shut up. You're my slave. Don't disobey your master. My husband was yelling at me like that, but I didn't care and started packing up my stuff. I'm getting out of here anyway. Let's discuss divorce through our lawyers. My husband was trembling with anger, but he couldn't move from the spot and just glared at me because he couldn't handle what was happening right in front of his eyes. I then grabbed my stuff and immediately went to my daughter's house. My daughter had been married once, but divorced due to her ex-husband's affair, and was now working as a single mother, raising a cute little boy. Maya was a career woman, and she was making a lot of money, so she had plenty of rooms and she had no problem at all with me moving in. I had told my daughter for some time that I was thinking of getting a divorce, and she had helped me with a lot of things. My daughter also taught me how to invest in stocks about 10 years ago as well. Without my daughter, I would not have been able to acquire so many assets. About a week later, I decided to talk to my husband about divorce and compensation with my lawyer. The discussion proceeded at a cafe near the house, where I used to live with Brian. My husband easily agreed to the divorce. For some reason, he was even full of smiles. I was relieved that he agreed to the divorce and signed the divorce papers. Now I am able to completely cut ties with this man. However, my husband said this with a victorious look on his face. I'll pay you compensation too. But as a married couple, we have to divide our assets, so I'm entitled to half of the assets you've saved. I know you thought you beat me, 
but I'm sorry. The money you worked so hard to save is half mine. My husband laughed so hard, and to this I couldn't help but laugh out loud. Wh what the? What are you laughing at? Are you crazy because you lost so much money all at once? My husband asked me in an irritated way. No, I am not. It was about 20 years ago, so you must have forgotten. Don't you remember when I initiated the divorce a long time ago? And? I promised you that if I ever asked for a divorce again, there would be no division of property. We even notarized it and made it clear that in the event of a divorce, we would have no claim to each other's property. As long as I have this, I don't have to give you any of my savings when we divorce. No, no way! My husband's face suddenly turned pale. Well, in exchange, I can't get half of your retirement money either. But I'm glad we have this deed, because if we had divided the property, I would have clearly lost more than you. And thank you for signing the divorce papers. Like this, we are complete strangers now. Now you can forget about me and go on with your life. Oh, and since you're the one in trouble, I'll pay for the coffee here. Please, take your time. With that, I left the cafe with my lawyer, leaving my husband in a state of shock. The moment we left the cafe, I felt very refreshed, knowing that this was all over. When I returned home, Maya said, Good job! to me, after seeing how refreshed I was with smiles on my face. Now you're free, Mom! Shall we go out to a restaurant to celebrate? That sounds good. We went to an Italian restaurant with my daughter and grandson to celebrate. After that, I continued to work part-time, as usual, at a bank teller's office, while continuing to manage my assets and stocks. This way, I don't have to worry about my retirement at all, and I will be able to leave my assets to my daughter and my grandson. And as for my ex-husband, according to what I heard from his relatives, his addiction to drinks got worse and worse, and he drank a lot every single day, which destroyed his health in the end. He is now forced to spend time in hospital, and his savings are disappearing quickly due to getting treatments and going to rehabs at the hospital. My ex-husband, who never saved any money in the first place, only has retirement money. But that retirement money is also decreasing rapidly. So, it is no longer enough to cover his future lifestyle, apparently. Well, it's none of my business anymore, and he got what he deserves. In comparison to my ex-husband, I'm going to spend happy, peaceful times with my daughter and my grandson while living a nice life. Emily's husband is crazy if he thinks that his wife is his slave. I think Emily has done a great job in a really difficult situation. From now on, I hope you will live happily in old age, surrounded by your wonderful family. Thank you for watching until the end. Please subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video.